Hey everyone, and welcome back to Lori's Boston Found, where thrifted is the new black. My name is Lori, and I am a fashion reseller on Poshmark and eBay. I also recently launched my own website at lauriesbostonfound.com. If you're new here, welcome. This is a channel all about my adventures in reselling, which lately, since I've been in quarantine, have really changed quite a bit from the norm of my channel. Today's video, I'm really excited because I finally did a little bit of retail arbitrage online. It's not really my thing. I would much prefer to be live when I go shopping, but I did take this time at home to take advantage of some of the sales I've seen and to just make a few purchases from websites and brands that I myself really enjoy. And I wanna share with you some of the tips that I use when I'm shopping retail arbitrage. You wanna stay on until the end of the video because at the end, I'm going to share with you a few retail arbitrage purchases that I've made and we're gonna talk about the outcome. Did I make money? Was it worth it? Um, I'm specifically going to be focusing on uh, Levi's and Madewell. I think that's it. I think those are the two things. Oh, and one other, Yeti. There are a few things that I have bought multiples of and that's what I'm gonna talk about today. And I'm gonna talk about how that panned out. So stay tuned and let's just get right into it. So the companies that I sourced from for the sake of this video were Anthropology, Madewell, Good American, and Peloton. I'll give you a little bit of history on each one of them. Well, not history, just like what my motivation was. Good American is a company that I've always wanted to shop with and I never really have. Um, I purchased one pair of jeans from another reseller in the community and I didn't love the fit of them. So I ended up reselling them and just like making my money back. Um, but I've always kept my eye on their stuff. So they recently had a sale and I ordered some stuff from them. I'm going to go over five tips for retail arbitrage that I like to follow. First tip is that I like to, if possible, purchase multiples. And the reason behind that is because retail arbitrage is typically more of an upfront investment. I'm spending way more money per item than I typically spend in a thrift store, but I am getting new with tag items and I am able to target brands that I like. So the first tip is that I like to buy multiples of things so that if I'm not making a huge profit, I'm not putting a ton of money into listings. If I can do one listing and have between two and 10 items, depending on how many I wanna purchase, that is kind of just saving some time for me. It's one listing, it's going to be brief, and it can last me as long as it lasts me, but I'm not creating multiple listings and putting in all that extra time. And also there's usually a lot of information that's readily available. Even if you don't believe in using stock photos, you still have all the information online when you purchase your item that you can pull measurements from, description, fabric content. It makes for a really super easy listing. And then if you combine that with ordering multiples of something, it just makes your life easier. So a little bit more worth the investment because you're not putting in as much work as you do, say for an item you might really like, but maybe it's flawed. Maybe you have to note certain things. You have to give measurements because it's been washed and dried and it doesn't, you know, like used listings are just a lot more work. So with that in mind, I'm just gonna show you really quickly. It's not like super earth shattering some of the things that I've got. But um, I will start with what I purchased at Madewell. So I ended up purchasing 10 of the same item and they range in size from small to 2XL, all the same thing. It's one thing, it's not that exciting. It is a turtleneck, a Madewell turtleneck. Um, let me get one. The cost on these were just $6 which was why I ordered so many. So the price on this is $35. So just these nice lightweight cotton, it's like maroon and cream turtleneck. I bought 10 of these. They retail for $35. I paid six. So if I list them at say $30 or even $28 and say I sell all of them for $20 each, let's just say 20 times 10, that's $200. My investment was $63. So with very little work, this will only take one listing. 
and it's a turtleneck. I don't anticipate that these will sell all that fast, but I do like having new with tag items to drive traffic to my closet. So I'm hoping to turn the $63 anywhere between $200 and $225 say. So that's all I picked up from Madewell, but very cute. I probably placed this order about two weeks ago. And one of the other tips that I'd like to share with retail arbitrage is I don't like to announce my retail arbitrage purchases when I'm purchasing them because I don't I don't want to get in the way of another reseller's buy. I don't really advertise that I'm purchasing these like via <laughs> videos like this. I tend to keep it a little bit on the down low um, because I want to give time for an item to like actually sell out on a website so then it does become you know, some a bit of an item that is no longer available. There is one item that I'm going to share that I bought multiples of in this haul that I typically wouldn't share because it's still available on the site. And I actually have it listed for more than what is available on the site right now. So it's kind of interesting. It's a bit of a game with retail arbitrage. I really strayed away this year from the yellow tags at TJ Maxx because I feel like that market is completely saturated. Not that you can't still find great deals working the yellow tag sales, but I think sometimes you're best off to just lay low with your retail arbitrage purchases. Maybe my tip isn't so much that I don't want to advertise that I'm purchasing it as much as I go in with the expectation that I'm probably going to be sitting on stuff for a while. And in this case with Madewell, I'm buying turtlenecks. So we are heading into summer. I don't anticipate that these will sell right away. But what you'll see at the end of the video is eventually most things do sell. And it's really nice when you sell through a run of retail arbitrage items that you've purchased multiples of, and then you can see like where you land with everything. So um, that's my second tip is kind of just be a little low key about your retail arbitrage, not post a video about it. That's all I got from Madewell. The next thing I wanna share are the couple of items that I got from Anthropology. Now, if you shop at Anthropology, I find retail arbitrage very frustrating when I use their online website because they advertise that they're having their sales. And I don't know if you've ever tried this, but I've mentioned it before. Oftentimes when I purchase something from Anthro, by the time I get to check out, the items are gone. Their stuff sells so quickly. My best advice is if you're on the fence about something, just go for it because they sell so fast. So with them, I ended up buying a more pricey item but it was something that I really loved. So this brings me to tip number three for retail arbitrage. When you're buying something, if you're investing a large sum of money, for me, I always make sure it's A, either something I myself would wear so that if it turns out to be a bad buy, I would be happy to wear it myself or be able to give it as a gift or be willing to take the risk that I might just be making my money back. So I don't often take chances on retail arbitrage pieces that I don't really love or believe in or that will fit me. So you'll see from Good American, some of the stuff I 100% plan on keeping and some of the stuff I plan on selling. But I usually order, try to order things in large or extra large so that maybe I like it. I can keep one of them, wear it in a video, like I can maybe sell it that way or I can actually keep it or give it as a gift. That's my third tip. Buy stuff you love because you may end up keeping it. <laughs> this is kind of random. I did pick this up. I love animal prints and this was like a snake skin. I want to say, gosh, I don't know what this was. This doesn't have the original price on it, which is a bummer to me, but I think this was very expensive. And this is just a wrap and it's so pretty. But again, this is not a summer item, but it's this wrap and it's got um, snake skin. Super, super soft material. I wasn't 100% sure on this, but I really loved the color combination. I love this evergreen with the snake skin and it's really, really soft. Um, and it brings me to my fourth tip about retail arbitrage. One of the things I look for are the things that are more than 50% off. 
I need to look at the original price on this, but if I think I paid $29 for that, which is a lot of money, but if you know me, I love my cover-ups. So I could potentially keep that. I could also give it as a gift if push came to shove. It was so much off the retail. So say for example, this was $118 on Anthropology's website. And then if I spent 30, I'd like to clear 60 on this. So I like to buy things that are way below the retail price so that when I list it, new with tag is still going to be A, a win for my customer and B, a win for me and I'll still be able to make profit. So tip number four, I like to buy things with high ticket value um, that I can purchase for at least 50% off. So let me bring you downstairs and I'm gonna show you the other pieces that I got from Anthropology. Actually, I'll grab them. I'll bring it up here for you and show you because I love this piece. So this is a camo utility jacket from Anthropology, and it's very lightweight. It's a great transitional jacket. It has these really cute little pleats on the side. So this retailed for $150 on their website. It was on sale for $89, and then I hit it for a half off sale. So this is a good example of my fourth piece of advice when shopping retail arbitrage. So these cost me $45 a piece, which is expensive, and I bought five of them. So this was kind of taking a risk, but I believe in this coat, <laughs> although it's not moving yet at the price I have it at. Here is where things get a little tricky. So $150, so $89, $45. I have this currently listed for $100, which is $50 off retail. This is where I'm going a little bit against my better practice with retail arbitrage. I don't really like to list things higher than they have it on their website, but what I've learned, and I'm gonna share with you one of my sales, not everybody checks the website, which to me as a reseller is just cuckoo. If I am on Poshmark and I see somebody has a listing, you better believe I'm gonna check everything around. I'm going to check Poshmark. I'm going to check eBay. I'm going to check the website. I'm going to see if there are coupons on Retail Me Not. I, I probably click five different websites before I make a purchase someplace. And in this case, this is still on the website, which is why I hate doing this, but this is still on the website. So if you like this coat, don't go to my closet, go to anthropology.com and buy it. But I'm going to show you, it's just, it's a big, and it's got like a little gathering in the back. I got this in a medium and I got it in, I got two larges and I believe one extra large. So I wasn't sure if I was gonna like the large or the extra large, but they run kind of big. So this is the large and it has like this cool distressing in different areas. I just love this. It's great with jeans. It's great in the spring. It's great in the fall. It's a great like layer piece. Love it so much. Can you tell I like it? I'm hoping that this does all right. I don't anticipate they're gonna sell right away, especially while they're still available at Anthropology but there were none available on Poshmark at the time. Which brings me to my fifth tip. You have to run your comps. So this is not a great example because um, there weren't many comps because this, wasn't, this hadn't yet hit Poshmark. I just really believed in this piece. But a lot of times when you're shopping retail arbitrage, these are things that companies are putting on sale because they're not selling typically. You know, they're not moving at the pace that the company wants to move it, so they put it on sale, just like we do. It's like when things are in our Poshmark closet for a really long time, we run sales because it's not moving at the higher price. Check your comps because when you're making a big investment in retail arbitrage, you wanna make sure you're gonna get your money back. So this was all I got at Anthropology. Next thing I'm gonna talk about was really crazy to me and another example of how things can sell for more money on Poshmark than on the website. But I, um, as you know, I recently purchased a Peloton. Hasn't come in yet, but I've gotten a couple referrals. If you purchase from my link, if you get a Peloton, you get $100 in credit for apparel on their website and then I get $100 credit for apparel on their website. So I purchased a couple sweatshirts. Again, I bought a large and an extra large, thinking that I would wear it. And then it was a crop sweatshirt, and when I put it on, I mean, crops and me do not go well together. In a perfect world, they would, but I am not the body type for crop. I'm always like kind of covering my middle area, not like accentuating it. But I was in dreamland and I bought, this is just a hoodie, and it has a heart on it. 
This is already sold. I've sold two of these in a week. This is Peloton in the back. And the brand is Spiritual Gangster. Now, I love Spiritual Gangster stuff. I don't find it often when I'm out at the thrift, but it's a brand that I love. Um, so this is a collab. And also on the Peloton website, they have like Lululemon branded stuff. And I think that's it, Lululemon and Spiritual Gangster. If, if there's another brand they collab with, I don't really know it. Anyway, these were marked $88 on sale for $52 final sale. So I used my credit and I purchased two of these. And when I listed them, um, I listed them for $80. The retail price is 88, but it's on the Peloton site for $52. So again, I put it up there just thinking when people go to the site, like mine will sit for a while, but eventually this will be worth something when they're sold out because I noticed that there were these tie-dye Peloton sweatshirts that were selling for $200, which were no longer available on the Peloton website. So I was like, well, I can ride it out and then I will, um, I'll make my money back. I sold one for $70 and one for $60. They sold within five days, which maybe I should hold out, but I didn't pay for these. I paid shipping. And um, I was really happy that they sold and I was happy to take the offer because I felt a little bit guilty that I was actually on their website for less money, but people bought it through Poshmark. I didn't need anything that was on their website. I was hoping that the money would go towards accessories because we actually need the riding sneakers that you can use or like we needed a mat to go underneath the bike, but it was just good for apparel. So I purchased that. My last purchase that I made for retail arbitrage was from Good American. Now I got the box in the mail yesterday or today and I haven't even opened it. I think I got a pair of pants for myself and maybe a hoodie, but I'm really not sure. So I'm gonna go through the box. It is a big box. I think I spent maybe $200. I don't know, but they had some really good prices. I'm not sure what is still available. Ooh, I'm already excited. These are the Good Legs snake skin pants. These are so cute. Okay. So once again, I ordered these in a size 12. I'm hoping they fit me. These will look so cute. I don't want to take them out of the bag, but I have to. I'm going to have to take them out to photograph them anyways. These are beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Now, most of their pants retail for like $200. I'll have to look online. I want to say I maybe paid like $30 to $40 for these, which... I was willing to do because I was excited to have these. Most of their stuff is high-waisted, which is a go for me. So my guess is I got these in a 12 and a 14 because I'm not sure which ones would fit me, but they have a lot of stretch and they are high-waisted. Um, these are a size 12 and I love them. They feel so nice. I live in lots of neutral colors, so this will be really fun for me. So I got a 12. Oh, I'm laughing. These were side by side. These are pants, this is a hoodie. How funny is that? So they have um, vanity sizing. So this is a size one, which I think is like a small, but I loved this. And I think they only had this in limited sizing. But so this is, yeah, this is so cute. The exact pattern, how obnoxious would that be? <laughs> <laughs> Certain people could get away with it. Oh, there's the Good American tag. Gorgeous quality. Oh, I would have totally bought this for myself. I think my size, like large, extra large, is like a four, a three or a four in this sizing. Anyways, this is beautiful quality. Let's see. I'm not crazy about black stuff to photograph. Oh, but this is so soft. Oh my gosh. This stuff is beautiful. This is such a Lori shirt, except that it's kind of short-waisted. So this is the back, see the V? That's a back plunge, but it's it's not like, it's kind of cropped. It's not obnoxiously cropped. Like I could probably get away with this, like a nice open neck. This is so incredibly soft and it has like the little flag in the, the GA for Good American. What's this made of? 95% modal and 5% spandex. Softest freaking thing you can imagine. This, oh, now I remember. These were really good prices. I got these crazy hoodies that I wanna say were like 25 or $30. And I thought with 4th of July coming up that these would be so cute. Oh my gosh, look at this. This is like a dress. This is like a hoodie dress. 
It's got the flag here. It's black with metallic silver. And then it just says GA on the back. So this is, this is not for a subtle look. <laughs> well, the front is kind of subtle, but it has this, the quality on this stuff is absolutely beautiful. This is a size four or five. And another thing that's nice about Good American, it's made in the USA. Um, this is such a cool piece. Oh, I'm excited to list this so that I could pull off a sweatshirt dress at, by the time 4th of July, I'll be like five days shy of my 47th birthday. If I could, I would. I might, I might, we'll see. I'm gonna try that baby on. All right, so this is the same thing, the Icon hoodie. So I have that one in a size four, five, and this is in a size two, three, so this is smaller. I'm very excited. Everybody's like in the co in comfort mode with quarantine. But just one other item, and then they did send, looks like perfume. So this I wasn't sure about because of the placement of the stars, but I know somebody will love it. If I got smaller sizes, it just means that they were selling out and they just had smaller sizes left. Um, but this has stars. <laughs> this is fun. And then it's got the, um, the flag on the back. And I really don't know that I would have purchased all of these if it weren't like 4th of July season but I thought this was really fun and somebody will like that. So my invoice is here, so let me just look. It's not an invoice, it's just a packing slip. So I got two of the Icon hoodies, the Stars and Stripes hoodies, the Back Plunge Pullover, the Good Legs Snake Skin Pants that I'm going to keep, the Oversized Hoodie, that was the Snake Skin one, and then they gave me like this fragrance um, for free. So that's it for my retail arbitrage. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna shift gears I'm gonna share my screen and I'm gonna show you a few purchases that I've made through Retail Arbitrage and show you how I've made out with them, okay? So I hope you enjoyed this portion of the video. If you haven't already, do give it a thumbs up if you're enjoying this. We're gonna move on to the next phase and we'll see how things go. Okay, so I just went online to review my order and these hoodies cost $25 each and I plan on listing them for $100. Um, the quality is incredible. This, <laughs> I did put this on and oh my gosh, I am totally in love with this. However, it is a literal dress. Wait a second. Ah, can you see this? So I'm going to keep moving back, keep moving back. It is a dress. It's actually a little too big for me, but it is so comfy and I'm seriously considering like cutting it. Although it has like good American in the back, but like cutting it and wearing it with leggings. This is awesome. I actually think this is bigger than my size. This is a four or five. I must be more like a three, four or two, three, or maybe this is just oversized this way. But anyway, I'm in love. I'm excited to list them. Um, so I just looked quickly. The snakeskin pants were $43. I'm keeping those if they fit. And then the snakeskin sweatshirt was 30. Everything else from that haul was $25, including the low V back. So now we are gonna, in fact, switch over and we're gonna look at some of my previous retail arbitrage adventures and see how they went. I'm gonna look at first are some Levi's that I've purchased. So I'm looking over here and we are just gonna click on Levi's for sold. And this item right here is what we are going to focus on. This was something that I picked up um, through retail arbitrage at TJ Maxx. Um, gosh, some of these are probably, actually I'm positive that I purchased them over a year ago because I picked up a couple pairs for my friend and she just celebrated her birthday in April. And when I saw her, I gave her these jeans. So these I purchased over a year ago. So it took me one year to sell through them. That may not be for everybody, but I thought it was worth it. They ranged in price between six and $10. I bought them at various um, TJ Maxx stores, but these are Levi's Vintage 1890 um, 501s salvage jeans. The price tag on these jeans is $350. So let's just see how many I've sold. I finally have sold through all of them. This pair sold for $68. So I'm just looking at Levi's right now. Um, here's another pair. These sold for 54. That was the lowest selling price. These sold for 79 and these sold for 75. So I'm going to grab my um, calculator here. Did anyone else catch that I missed a pair of jeans when I was just adding there? I actually sold five pairs of these Levi's 
for a total of over $340 in sales on my original $40 investment. So that was one of my more successful retail arbitrage sales um, when it comes to purchasing multiple items. I would love to find those jeans again. So I just wanted to pop in here. My math isn't great these days. So we have 79 plus 74 plus 54, did I say? That one was low. 54 plus, and then they just sold my last pair for $68. So that's $275. So let's divide that by four. 275 divided by four equals, so $68.75 was the average selling price of those jeans. And let's say my average cost was $8. So let's do, um, so eight times four is $32. So let's do 275 and let's take out Poshmark's fee, which is 20%. So we'll do times 0.8. So that gives me $220 after Poshmark takes their fees. And then I'm going to subtract the $32 I paid. So on those four pairs of Levi's, I made $188. That's what I cleared on four pairs. One listing, that was it, very simple. And I really loved the style of these jeans. So if we go into them, they were very cool. Um, they had some distressing on them. This was the home run label, it was really cool. And here we go. 501s vintage. I had a picture of the button fly. So I would totally buy these again. This was really fun, very unique. The price seemed to go down a little bit. There seemed to be a lot more buzz on them when I first listed them. But yes, I was really happy that they had a $350 price tag. You can see it right here. So that is one example of some retail arbitrage that I did pretty well with. Another example that I'm going to show you is a lot of Madewell scarves that I picked up. Let's go to my closet. I'm going to search by brand and we're going to search Madewell. And now we're going to go to sold. So this is the scarf right here that sold. So I picked these up. They had a red line through them at the store. The price tag was $65 and they were $4.97 each. And I bought, I think, six of them. So um, that is it. This is also follows into one of my five tips, which is $65 is the retail. I paid $5. We are talking just a fraction, like more than 75% off the price. So this to me was a great investment. I, think I bought these back to school 2019. Um, so we were, it was like August and I was at the mall and these were just marked really low, beautiful fabric, $65. So that's that. Okay. So now let's go back and see what they all sold for. So it did take some time to sell those because I think I just sold like this. This is my last wave of sales for last one that sold. So we had one, I'm going to add these up. So one sold for 38 plus, ooh, three in a row, four in a row. So 38 plus 32, oh, missed 35, 35 plus 30 plus 38 plus. That's 173. Okay, so that's all. So I guess I had five of them. One, two, three, four, and five. And I took me almost a year to sell through them. Not quite a year, probably let's say nine or 10 months. So 173 um, divided by five. The average selling price of this scarf was $34.60. And I wanna say like I paid like 475 for each one. So if we want to do the same math again, let's say I paid $4.75 for each one. I bought five. So my investment was $23.75. 173 times 0.8 is $138 is what I would have cleared from Poshmark. And then we are going to subtract the, what did I say? $23.75? short-term memory issues. Anyways, ballpark. And then I ended up with $114.65. Very easy to measure and photograph an accessory like a scarf. It wasn't a quick turnaround. I, it looks like I did go through a slew where they were selling back to back to back. I'm gonna do Yeti. I'm gonna do sold. Okay, these three hats. This I wish so much that I had gone back and bought these. I'm not going to go through every step because this is a quick one. But these Yeti hats, I got um, yellow tag sale 
at Marsh, uh, TJ Maxx, sorry. And I wasn't like really taken aback by them at first. How much did they cost? So the price was $24.99. I paid three. So again, that's that's definitely a significant savings. But I had no expectation with these. I'm not even sure if I ran comps on these while I was at the store. Um, but they were just these Yeti hats. I bought three, cost me $9. Very, very quick to list. I did this like combination with the stock photo and a picture of the Yeti here. And these are their selling price, 24, 24, and 20. So we're talking about $68 here before fees for a $9 investment in a very, very simple listing. So this is why I love buying multiples. I just feel like it makes all the difference. If you're just gonna get one off, unless it's really gonna bring you a lot of money, you should really consider whether or not it's worth that. That is all for today. I really hope that you all enjoyed some of the tips that I offered for shopping retail arbitrage. I'm not sure that I followed my own tips because I think I overspent on some of these items. We are all in quarantine, so it's a nice time to be reflecting on retail arbitrage. It's nice to look back on previous purchases that I made and see how they've done. So just as a wrap, on the three items that I highlighted, the Yeti hats, the scarves from Madewell and the Levi's jeans, I invested in total $72.75 and I cleared after fees $392.05 on those items. I made over five times my money on that investment. So that's a win to me. It did take a long time. If you are somebody who likes to make fast flips, you may wanna even reconsider more what you're buying for retail arbitrage, but I don't mind a long tail sale. So that's all for today. Just wanted to let you know that tomorrow night, Daniela and I, Daniela is my partner at Thrifters Villas podcast. We are going live on Leslie Tucker's YouTube channel. So she is at A Reseller's Passion on YouTube. So check us out. We're gonna be there tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Eastern time. And then on Friday on my channel, I will be going live at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with my good friend Denali from El Ducho Thrift. So I hope you'll tune in and say hi to Denali and I and to Daniela and Leslie and I tomorrow night. I'm excited. I'm excited for a few nights of live action here on YouTube. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. Please consider subscribing if you enjoy my content. It really, really helps me and means a lot to me. Leave a comment below. Let me know how you're doing with retail arbitrage. Is it your bag? Are you back in the stores? The stores are opening. Um, that's going to be a conversation for Friday night that we'll definitely touch on. So remember, I release videos every Sunday and every Wednesday, and I usually do my lives every other Friday night. Love you guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.